Today we're going to talk about protein-protein interfaces, how to think about designing them. Um, and this is kind of really useful for probably all of you who want to do binder design and oligomer design. Um, so thinking about protein interface design, I find it useful to appreciate the challenge that proteins are facing. So the environment inside a cell is incredibly crowded. I think of it as like Times Square during New Year's Eve and you're trying to find one other person in, an, in a huge crowd. Um, the concentration inside a cell is like 300 m milligrams per microliter. So this is like a thick shake almost, right? So you're trying to move through this, find your one friend. Um, and so thinking about this, protein-protein interfaces need to be very specific. They need to um, sort of associate as soon as they find their partner. Um, and so how are they really doing this? And that's kind of what I want to talk about. So the basic principles of interface design, when two proteins interact, they're generally burying about 1,200 to 2,000 square angstroms of surface area. So that's about the size of a small protein domain. So you can kind of imagine it as like almost folding of two domains next to each other. Um, it's usually about 10 to 20 amino acids per protein. And I like to think of it like a handshake. So you need to make enough contact that it's like secure, but you want you don't want to be grabbing the other person's hand. You want to be able to let go as well. Um, and you need the surfaces to kind of be complementary, like puzzle pieces. Um, and then you also need specificity, right? So your designed interface needs to bind its target strongly, but nothing else. Um, so it's kind of like designing a key that can only f should only fit one lock and shouldn't um, f uh, fit any of the other thousands of locks in the cell. And then also stability. We want to make sure that the interface is stable enough to function, but not too stable so that it can dissociate. Um, and you can see this interface of PD1, PDL1, which is one of the more commonly studied interfaces. Um, I like to look at this because it sort of shows you the general principles of interface design, which is hydrophobic packing and then surrounded by these sort of hydrogen bonding and polar um, networks that are sort of giving it that um, specificity because for hydrophobic interactions, it's kind of nonspecific. So you want to make sure that there's those like polar interactions that give it specificity, keep it in place. So like I was talking about, there are multiple chemical forces at play here. Obviously there's um, the salt bridges that form between positively and negatively charged amino acids. There's also hydrogen bonds, especially with hydrogen bonding networks. These can provide sort of a lot of cooperative strengthening. So it's giving you specificity based on like how the residues are positioned with each other. Um, this is in contrast to the Van der Waals forces and hydrophobic packing, which are more nonspecific, but they kind of are used to make the interface stronger in my um, eyes. And then, of course, the shape of the interface is actually going to matter here. So we used to think it was sort of a lock and key idea. I think that's kind of an older idea now. Um, and the induced fit model is more popular. But essentially, I like to think of it as having a surface um, which is complementary to the interface that you're designing. And this surface actually has some amount of conformational flexibility, right? So it's sampling these different conformations. And what you really want to do is build an interface that stabilizes and interacts with one of these conformations. And then we also want to think about stability here. So proteins achieve stability by cooperation through multiple different factors. So even though the individual interactions aren't actually that much energy, altogether they're creating this sort of strong and specific binding. So I think about it as like Velcro. Like one of those little Velcro hooks isn't going to do anything, but when you put them all together, it's sort of a really stable and strong interface. So that means that the buried surface area is crucial. Like bigger interfaces are going to be more stable. And the packing density at the interface is also going to be really important, which is why these hydrophobic interactions are so useful. So designing for stability, um, I like to think about using hydrophobic residues in the core, like I said, and then um, designing hydrogen bonding networks around the side. And you also want to think about backbone flexibility, like how 
rigid is your interface. Um, and nature does tend to use like both rigidity and flexibility, so it's possible to target both kinds of interfaces, but you just have to think about them slightly differently. And then achieving specificity. I think this is one of the harder problems. Um, there's some strategies that you can kind of follow here. So I'm showing here a protein that Matt, the TA, one of the TAs, designed as sort of like uh, an exaggeration. Um, and so this interface is sort of all positive on one side, all negative on one side. And he's designing these heterodimers, so he doesn't want the homo dimer to form. And it actually ended up working, I think, right? So um, obviously this is sort of like an extreme example, but you want to be thinking about like which charges to place where, especially if you're trying to achieve specificity in that way. Um, you can also think about positive and negative design here. So um, one approach is to design positively for a specific interaction while also modeling the interaction that you don't want to have and sort of designing away from that. And there's multiple approaches to doing that. I think we'll talk more about this tomorrow in like more specifics, but just something to keep in mind. Like also be thinking about what you don't want while you're thinking about what you do want. I want to look at this sort of classic example because I think it's really beautiful how the two interfaces complement each other. Um, I think it would be great if everyone could sort of pull up this structure on their computers and look at it, and then we'll kind of jump into the activity from there. Um, so the PDB code is 2ZA4. Um, in PyMol, you can go into the command line and type fetch space 2ZA4, and you should be able to get the structure. and then. I kind of want to hear from you guys, like, what do you think makes this one of the strongest interfaces in nature? There's obviously multiple factors um, in play in recognition between different protein interfaces, and so you kind of need to make sure you're balancing um, stability and dissociation. You need to make sure you're balancing both the shape and the hydrophobics, as well as the um, polar contacts and the chemistry. And I find a lot of inspiration from nature's elegant solutions to interface design. So I encourage you all to also like, look at protein interfaces in your free time. <laughs>